pleasure, great pleasure today to introduce uh, Dr. Maricela Morales. Um, she is currently a senior investigator and section chief of the neuronal network section at the Intramural Research Program at the National Institutes of Drug Abuse. She's also the uh, branch chief of the Integrative Neuroscience Research Branch and director of the IRP cores, which includes electron and confocal microscopy, histology and genetic engineering and viral vector cores at NIDA. Um, Dr. Morales received her PhD in cell biology and biochemistry from the Institute of Experimental Biology at the University of Guanajuato in Mexico. She subsequently completed postdoctoral training at the University of Colorado in Boulder and was a senior research associate in neuropharmacology division at Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla, California before starting a career at NIDA. Um, she currently serves on 10 different committees within NIH and NIDA, including a number related to racial equity, and has chaired a number of uh, conferences, including the National Hispanic Science Network Conference in 2021. Notably, she received a number of uh, awards, and most recently, the NIDA Director Award in 2021, as well as the NIDA Mentoring Award in 2020. She participates in education as well and currently teaches at the Cold Spring Harbor course, uh, summer addiction, um, sorry, the summer course on neuroscience of addiction. Her research has been published in a number of high profile journals, including Neuron, Molecular Psychiatry and Nature Neuroscience. And she's conducted seminal work on the functional role of various cell types in the ventral tegmental area important for motivated behavior, innate defense behaviors and stress induced anhedonia. So Dr. Morales, uh, welcome to UCLA, and we really look forward to your talk today. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation. It is a great pleasure to be here today and present some of the work that we have been doing on characterizing the neurons in the ventral tegmenta area. And in the process, the discovery uh, anticipated mechanisms of release of more than one neurotransmitter. The ventral tegmenta area has been implicated in, in several motivated behaviors. And this uh, area is best known for containing the dopamine neurons that send projections to different brain structures, including the prefrontal cortex and the nucleus accumbens. And this uh, system is known as the mesocorticolimbic dopamine system. So we have been um, testing the hypothesis that the, the different um, in, uh, roles that they have been uh, ascribed to the VTA are mediated by different types of neurons, as well as the way in which these neurons interact of establishing a specific synapses and also the way by which these neurons encode information coming from different brain structures. So in a systematic manner, we have been analyzing these inputs to the, the different parts of the brain to these uh, different types of neurons in the VTA. And we have found that the dorsal raphe has glutamatergic neurons that establish synapses on dopamine neurons that project to nucleus accumbens, and this pathway is involved in reward. And more recently, uh, we also found that there are glutamatergic neurons in the lateral hypothalamus that establish synapses on glutamatergic neurons in the VTA, and this pathway is involved in innate defensive behavior. Today, I won't have time to cover these aspects of inputs to the VTA. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the different types of neurons in the VTA. For over 60 years, we had known that the VTA has dopamine neurons and the activity of these neurons is inhibited in part by neighboring GABA neurons. For over 10 years, we have been provided evidence that in the VTA, 
there are neurons that utilize glutamate as a neurotransmitter. In addition to these uh, three types of neurons, the VTA has combinatorial neurons. Some of them are dopamine neurons that co-release neuropeptides, co-release GABA, or co-release uh, glutamate. And in the last years, uh, we have found an unusual type of neuron in the VTA. These are neurons that co-release glutamate and GABA. And of course, this goes against textbook knowledge in which we learn that there are either glutamatergic neurons of GABA neurons. But we found that in the VTA, there are these dual uh, glutamate GABA neurons. So today I'm going to touch briefly on dopamine neurons, present some data on the uh, glutamatergic neurons and some of the work also on the dopamine uh, glutamate neurons and glutamate GABA neurons. This is what I'm going to be covering today. Um, dopamine neurons uh, can be identified at the anatomical level uh, thanks to the presence of tyrosine hydroxylase, which is the limiting enzyme for the production of catecholamines. And this enzyme is highly abundant throughout the entire uh, neuron, the dopaminergic neuron. So that's why by using antibodies against TH, we can label the entire dopaminergic neuron. So this is a coronal section showing you in brown the detection of tyrosine hydroxylase within the VT8 and substantia nida compacta. If we look more in more detail into the VTA, we can see different uh, nuclei, the parabrachia, pigmented nuclear, uh, nucleus, the, the paranigra, the caudal linear, the interfascicular, and the rostral linear nuclei. The parabrachial and the paranigral are part of the lateral VTA, as all, and they are also part of the lateromedial VTA. The, those that they are in magenta, the caudal linear interfascicular and rostral linear, they are part of the medial VTA. This uh, nomenclature and compartmentalization is not perfect. But we argue that it allowed us uh, to compare findings and extract information across different studies. So regarding the glutamatergic neurons, our knowledge on these neurons and the means to manipulate them has been highly improved by the cloning of three vesicular glutamate transporters. These transporters, uh, are intercalated, the proteins get intercalated uh, in the membrane of synaptic vesicles for the uptake of glutamate. We uh, look for these different transporters in the VTA and found that the VGLUT3, uh, the, the VTA, gluta is, that the glutamatergic neurons in the VTA, all of them express VGLUT2 mRNA. So the BGLUT2 mRNA uh, is a way by which we identify cell bodies of glutamatergic neurons in the VTA because the proteins are in a very uh, low concentrations in the cell bodies and processes. So they are undetectable with antibodies. So Sujoshi so in the lab uh, did or initially in situ hybridization using radioactive probes. And this is an example of the VTA showing the detection of BGLU2 mRNA using these radioactive probes. Therefore, each um, cell that contains BGLU2 is seen as aggregates of silver grains. The same sample was processed uh, for the detection of TH protein with antibodies. And a higher magnification, uh, we identify within the VTA neurons that contain just TH, but do not have BGLU2. And we refer to these neurons as TH only neurons. Notice that these neurons are present within the lateral to the medial aspects of the VTA. 
Within the same section, you can see neurons lacking TH, but containing BIGLU2 mRNA. And we refer to these neurons as BIGLU2 only neurons. And here, these neurons are infrequent in the very lateral part of the VTA. And here, specifically here in the caudalinear nucleus, they outnumber the TH neurons. We also found these dual neurons that contain TH and BIGLU2. And we refer to these neurons as BIGLU2 TH neurons. Notice that they are confined to the medial part of the VTA. So if we compare the composition of the very lateral part of the VTA, you immediately realize that that is different than if we study the um, lateral medial of the medial part of the VTA. And the reason why I like to bring this to your attention is that for many years, the studies on VTA, especially in studies doing slice electrophysiology, they have been um, focused on the very lateral part of the VTA. And we have been argued that in order to have a better understanding of the VTA, it's necessary to study the lateral medial and medial part of the VTA. So we found these three different types of neurons in rodents, but also in non-human um, uh, primates and in humans. And this is an example of the coronal section of the human VTA in which uh, we identified the TH only neurons, but we also found BIGLU2 only neurons, and we found the dual BIGLU2 TH neurons. So uh, the discovery of this type of neurons all the way from the VTA or rodents to human offers a very uh, op a good opportunities to use animal models to study the possible function of these neurons and from there infer the function that they have in human behavior. So after we discovered these neurons, next, next we wanted to know uh, what is the role of these neurons in behavior. And for that, we use an approach in which first we wanted to know the extent to which these neurons establish local connections within the VTA and the extent to which these neurons project outside the VTA. So we found that indeed these glutamatergic neurons establish local connections in the VTA. And this is a, a summary of uh, what we found. We found that these uh, VTA VGLUT2 neurons make synapses on dopamine neurons. And we observed this by immunoelectron microscopy. I'm going to be showing several of these kind of micrographs. In here, this is the axon terminal of this glutamatergic neuron, which is making synapses. Here is the synapse, making the synapse on this uh, dopamine neuron. This is a dopaminergic dendrite. So this is the ultrastructural evidence for the synapse. And all the time I say this, you know, there are different ways in which we can infer the presence of a synapse. But the only way so far to visualize a synapse is by looking at this kind of micrographs, which are the result of immunoelectron microscopy analysis. So in addition to the anatomical evidence, we also have the electrophysiological evidence showing that glutamate release from this local glutamatergic neuron on dopamine neurons induce the firing of this dopamine neuron. And this firing is inhibited by um, glutamate receptor antagonists. Furthermore, uh, Hewling one in, in the lab found that these some of these dopamine neurons that receive glutamatergic input from local neurons, they project to the nucleus accumbens. And the activation of this local pathway and their projection to the nucleus accumbens 
results in the release of dopamine. And when she tested this activation of this pathway, that shows that the, um, the animals uh, displays place preference. So for us, this was very exciting because until this point, it was thought that all glutamatergic inputs into the VTA, they were coming from outside the VTA. But here we clearly demonstrate that there's a local source of glutamatergic neurons in the VTA. Now, for those of you who work with the cortex and hippocampus, this is not a surprise. Uh, to have this uh, local uh, microcircuitry, but for us who work in the midbrain, this was uh, something that we didn't expect. So uh, in summary, uh, what I show you here is that these uh, VTA glutamatergic neurons establish local excitatory synapses on dopamine neurons that innervate the nucleus accumbens and activation of this pathway um, results in the local release of glutamate and also this pathway is rewarding. So then we start analyzing uh, the projections of these neurons, glutamatergic neurons outside the VTA. And now uh, we found that the both the big glut 2 only and the big glut 2 TH neurons they project to the nucleus accumbens and also project to the medial prefrontal cortex. And these um, results have been confirmed by other groups, uh, the group uh, indicated here. So what we, with these observations, what we concluded is that in addition to the very well-known mesocorticolimbic dopamine system, which I talked about at the beginning, uh, there's a parallel uh, mesocorticolimbic glutamatergic system, which is derived from both uh, the big glut 2 and the big glut 2 TH neurons. So uh, we have been analyzing the, in more detail, these pathways. And today, I'm not going to talk about the medial prefrontal cortex projection. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the projection from the VTA to the nucleus accumbens. So GI in the lab wanted to analyze in detail the, this projection, glutamatergic projections from the VTA to the nucleus accumbens. And what she decided to do is to apply uh, optogenetics in which she used big glut 2 cream uh, mice. And in two different cohorts, she injected in the VT8 either adenovirus to express channel rhodopsin tether to yellow fluorescent protein, or as a control, just yellow fluorescent protein. And the expression, of course, of these um, uh, proteins is going to be under the control of the big glut 2 promoter. So she, after injecting these uh, vectors into the VTA and waiting for some time, then she put in above the nucleus accumbens uh, an optical fiber with a laser to stimulate the release of glutamate within the nucleus accumbens, and then tested these animals in a three chamber apparatus. In this, appar in this apparatus, the animals are free to travel from one chamber to another, but one of the chambers is um, connected to a, a, a pair to a laser, such that each time that the animal goes into this laser pair chamber, the the optical the laser is going to be activated, and therefore there is going to be release of glutamine. So this is the control in which of course the glutamate is not released. And as you can see, there's no preference uh, to any of the chambers. However, when we tested the channel rhodopsin uh, containing animals, we were very surprised. And we were surprised because the animal avoided the laser per chamber. And the surprise um, 
And we were surprised because until this point, there were several um, studies showing that glutamate releasing the nucleus accumbens is uh, rewarding. But we are finding the opposite. We found that glutamate release in the nucleus accumbens from the VTA is aversive instead of being rewarding. So then we, uh, after this, uh, so then we decided to look into the possible mechanism that is mediating these unexpected results. And we applied pharmacology, electrophysiology, optogenetics, anatomy, and we came to this uh, conclusion. We found that the VTA, uh, big glutune neurons establish multiple synapses on parvalbumin GABA interneurons in the nucleus accumbens, such that the activation of these glutamatergic neurons results in the release of glutamate, which activates glutamate receptors in these parvalbumin neurons. And this um, glutamatergic inputs on a parvalbumin neurons is very strong. Uh, I'll, what we found is that a single parvalbumin neuron receives multiple glutamatergic inputs from these BTA glutamatergic neurons, such that the activation of glutamatergic receptors within the parvalbumin neurons results in the release of GABA, and this GABA uh, activates GABA receptors in the medial spiny neurons. And this is the mechanism that drives aversion, which is, and in the past, what people have studied um, was the release of glutamate on medial spiny neurons. But here we discover um, release of glutamate on parvalbumin interneurons. So in conclusion, what we found is that the VTA BGLU2 only neurons provide an excitatory input to this uh, nucleus accumbens, parvalbumin GABA interneurons. And we found that this pathway drives aversion instead of reward. So now moving into the dopamine glutamatergic neurons, uh, we um, the discovery of these dual glutamatergic dopaminergic neurons has been very exciting because it raised the possibility of co-release of dopamine and glutamate from the same neuron. And uh, Steven in the lab uh, decided to drive the expression of uh, M. cherry on the, re the regulation of the TH in order to label TH neuron terminals within the nucleus accumbens. And what we found is this three reconstruction of an axon. Look at this is the, in red, is the 3D reconstruction of an axon coming from the VTA. And in this particular axon, he found areas that contain big loot two. And this, uh, when each time that you see big loot 2 detection of the, at the protein level, this is an indication of an axon terminal. So here in this axon, identify these axon terminals containing big loot 2 And in the same axon, he identified uh, segments that contain TH. So this is confocal microscopy. So when he, so he went and looked for the same kind of structures uh, under the electron microscope. And what he found is uh, this axon that contains vesicles with big loot two, which are concentrated in a segment in the axon adjacent to another segment that contains vesicles with a vesicular monoamine transporter for the accumulation of dopamine. So basically what I'm showing you here is a shared axon that contains 
vesicles for the accumulation of glutamate and vesicles for the accumulation of dopamine. Importantly, these axon terminals that contain the GLUT2 are making synapses on the head of the dendritic spines. And here you can see the postsynaptic density. So next, we wanted to know if these kind of structures release dopamine and release glutamate. So for that, uh, we did a combination of uh, slice electrophysiology and um, uh, in vitro voltometry. And I'm just going to show you the results from the voltometry. In collaboration with Carl Lupica and Alice Hoffman and Naida, we prepared uh, nucleus accumbens slices from an animal that um, expressed a channel rhodopsin under the big glue 2 promoter. So the idea uh, was to deliver channel rhodopsin in these kind of structures and then shine light and measure the release of dopamine. And what we found is that indeed these structures release dopamine. And here there's an example. The more pulses that we give of light, one pulse is in black and red is 10 pulses. The more pulses that we shine on these slides, the more release of dopamine that we have. So basically now what I'm showing you is that these double big glue two TH neurons form a symmetric synapsis with the head of dendritic spines. In the, this medial, uh, dendritic, the, the heads of the uh, medial um, spiny neurons in the nucleus accumbens and show you that these the axons from the dual big glue 2 TH neurons have vesicles for the accumulation and release of uh, glutamate and vesicles for the release of dopamine. So in summary, these dual big glue 2 TH neurons release glutamate and dopamine, but they do so from different uh, microdomains and also from different types of vesicles. So now I'm going to move into the last part of my talk, referring to the glutamate GABA neurons. And for us, this has been very exciting at different levels because we got our inspiration of studying projections from the VTA to the lateral javenula from a very nice paper published by Larry Swanson in 82. And at that time, people thought that the only neurons that there were in the VTA, there were dopamine. Uh, but he uh, found that neurons from the VTA projecting to the lateral havenula in the vast majority lack TH immunolabeling. So we thought maybe the VTA neurons that they have glutamate are the ones that project to the VTA, uh, to the lateral havenula. And the reason for that is because we identified the big glut 2 neurons in this area in the VTA in which uh, Larry Swanson found neurons that project to the lateral havenula. So what we decided to do is to inject a fluorogol, the retrograde tracer fluorogol into the lateral havenula and then in the VTA, look for fluorescent uh, fluorogold neurons. And this is what we found. This is a very nice uh, fluorogold containing neuron in the VTA, indicating that this neuron projects to the lateral havenula. So then we phenotype these neurons by initially by using radioactive riboprots. And we found that indeed these fluorogold neurons contain big glut 2 mRNA. Here is seen as uh, aggregates of silver grains uh, seen in, in green. And we found that 90% of all these fluorogold neurons express big glut 2. So indicating that the big glut 2 neurons 
is a major uh, population of neurons projecting to the lateral habenula. But still, we are missing a 5%. So I asked people in the lab if they could please look if these neurons contain GABAergic markers, at least the 5%. And the person who decided to, to do the study, it was uh, David Ruth. And what he found, surprisingly, is that uh, the vast majority of fluorogol neurons contain uh, GAD. GAD is uh, mRNA meaning that these neurons that contain glutamic acid decarboxylase, they are, they, were, they are capable of synthesized GABA. So not only that, but he found that 80% of the VTA neurons that innervate the lateral havenula contain both GAD and BGLUT2. So this was uh, very exciting for us uh, and we, uh, carry on these studies for almost four years to make sure that what we've been uh, observing here, it was not due to uh, contamination of the props in the lab. So then the next question that we had is, are these neurons present in other parts of the brain or maybe just in the VTA? So to answer that question, we decided to change a strategy. And I'm going to talk about that now because so far what, uh, what I have telling you about this uh, VTA uh, putative glutamatergic gabergic neurons is that they have big glut 2 mRNA and they had GAT mRNA. What does it mean? It means that these neurons have the potential to synthesize the big glut 2 protein and put it into the vesicles and they have the capability to utilize glutamate to make GABA. However, we wanted to know the extent to which these neurons contain also the vesicular GABA transporter in order to accumulate GABA into vesicles. So for the mapping of the whole brain mapping of cells that could express that may have the capability to release glutamate and GABA, what we decided is to look for big glut 2 mRNA and big GAD mRNA. Basically, we are looking for the vesicular transporters of GABA and glutamate. And throughout the whole brain, we identified, in addition to the VTA, we identified other two structures, the endopedincular nucleus and the supramamillary nucleus. So when our paper came out, another paper came out also the same week from the group of Roberto Malina, showing in, in electrophysiological evidence for the presence of GABA glutamate releasing neurons from the EPN. And more recently from the group of Bernardo Sabatini using a single cell uh, identification, they found that in the EPN, there are neurons that contain big 2 and big gut. So regarding the VTA, to go into more detail, uh, we confirm the presence of big 2 only neurons. And what we were very surprised is to identify GABA neurons that there are, this, look at this, they are distributed throughout all the compartments of the VTA, but they are not as numerous as the GABA neurons. And also we identified the big glut 2 big gut neurons in the middle part of the VTA. So the reason why I comment your attention is that for almost 30 years, people have been studying GABA neurons in the VTA, but in fact, these neurons are not a very strong population comparing with the dual big glut 2 GAD and the big glut 2 only neurons. So these are very special neurons that they are spread through the VTA, these GABA only neurons. So in a, to better characterize these neurons, uh, we then start using RNA scope and found that all neurons that 
synthesized BGLUT2 and BGAT, they also contain GAT mRNA. So what does it mean? It means that we have this population of neurons capable of synthesizing GABA, incorporating GABA into vesicles, and incorporating glutamate into vesicles. We identified the same type of neurons in the entopedincular nucleus. And that just to show you the rostral caudal distribution of these three different types of neurons, the BGLUT2, BGAT, and BGLUT2, BGAT neurons. And these are the neurons that project to the lateral habenula from the EPN. So next, so now we have these two sources of BGLUT2, BGAT neurons, the one from the endopedicular nucleus and the BTA. And we uh, found that these neurons project to the lateral habenula. So next we wanted to know what kind of synapses these uh, neurons are making. So what we decided to do is to take uh, um, slices from the lateral habenula and look for the distribution of the BGLUT2 and BGAT within the lateral habenula. And for that we did ultrastructural analysis. And this is uh, what we found. This is a micrograph of the lateral habenula. And here I had to tell you that most of, our, most of us are used to see fluorescent images, red, green, you know. But in the case of electron microscopy, you don't see colors. You just see uh, black, white, grades, and different shades of them, of, of the gray and, and the black. And that gives us the signal. So here we don't expect to see fluorescent images, but instead different uh, gray and black images. So here, this is an axon terminal that is making a synapse with this dendrite. And a higher magnification I'm showing you here. And this in, you can see here, the vesicles in this axon terminal. And in this particular case, the signal for BGLUT2 is given by this diffuse material here. And this uh, is the um, dendrite. So here we have another axon terminal. And here uh, you can see also the axon terminal with the vesicles. There are all these vesicles here, a mitochondria here. And here the signal for BGAT is given by these dark dots. This is, this is colloidal gold. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is nothing unusual. We know that throughout the brain, there are axon terminals that release um, GABA, uh, glutamate, which is this. And there are axon terminals that release GABA. This is an example. However, in the same preparation, we found a very unusual type of axon terminal. This is an axon terminal that has both. It has big glut 2 which is the electrodense material diffuse here, like this one. And also it has big GAD, that is this dark dots. So this is the unusual. So this is the first time as, as that this has been shown. Uh, axon terminal that has the capability of co-release glutamate and GABA based on the presence of the big glut 2 and big GAD. Furthermore, uh, what we found, so this is the big GAD and this is the diffuse big glut 2. And what we found is that this single axon terminal is capable to establish a synapse here that is called asymmetric because you see here the big postsynaptic density. So presumably this is an excitatory synapse and the same axon terminal is capable to make what is called a symmetric synapse, which is a, a characterized a morphological uh, 
characteristics of inhibitory synapses. So now we identified these three types of axon terminals in the lateral habenula. So the next, the next question is how frequent, uh, the frequency of these uh, unique biglutubicate axons in the lateral habenula. So what we did, uh, well, Steven did quantification of all the axon terminals in the lateral habenula, and he quantified more than a thousand uh, axon terminals in the lateral habenula, and he found that 50, uh, um, a little more than half of all axon terminals in the lateral habenula are big lutubicat. There are double. Uh, releasing terminal. He found that one third of all axon terminals in the lateral havenula uh, are glutamatergic, and as little as 30% are GABAergic. So this is very exciting because this indicates that a major way by which the lateral havenula is regulated is by axon terminals that co-release glutamate and GABA. And lateral havenula has been implicated in several brain disorders, in, including uh, schizophrenia, depression, and also in mediating withdrawal effects of several drugs of abuse. So, what we wanted next to, to study is whether or not this axon terminal is making synapses on the same dendrite or in different dendrites. And so these are preliminary data and showing that both a single axon terminal that correlates glutamine and GABA tar can target one uh, dendrite from one, act, from one uh, uh, neuron, but also can target two different dendrites from, of course, coming from different uh, uh, neurons. And this is an example. This is a very preliminary data. Now we are doing three-dimensional uh, reconstruction using a scan electron microscopy. And this is uh, an example in which we saw this axon terminal making synapses with this dendrite and another dendrite that appear to be coming from different neurons. So, so far what I have told you is that in, in the VTA and the EPN, there are cell bodies that had GAD mRNA, BGAD mRNA, and BGLUT2 mRNA. And I have shown you that these neurons are capable of these transcripts also are capable to synthesize proteins that go in the terminals. And these are the terminals from these dual uh, VTA EPN neurons. Now, the next question is how these transporters are distributed at the vesicular level? There are several possibilities, one, that they, here some of these vesicles contain just big glut 2 and within the same axon terminal, some vesicles contain big A. But there's a third option, and that is that both big glut 2 and big A are present in the same vesicle. And just for disclosure, I'm going to tell you that my colleagues, based on electrophysics, Theology and some confocal microscopy, they favor this. And there are papers that they are coming out, in people claiming that there are vesicles that co release glutamate and GABA. So, what we decided to do is to obtain vesicles. So, we're going to obtain vesicles from the lateral havenula and look for the distribution of big group two and big A. So basically we're going to be looking at this. So in this kind of experiments, it is very important to check the integrity and the health of the 
our preparations. And here you can see uh, our synaptic preparation from the lateral havenula showing all these nice vesicles. And then we use antibodies against uh, big glut 2 and antibodies against big gut. And we're going to see the signal for big glut 2 and big gut using colloidal gold of different diameters. And this is an example of a vesicle. This is a vesicle. It's a higher magnification. This is a vesicle in which you can see the big glut 2 signal. And this is what you are seeing. Within the same preparation, we have vesicles. This is the vesicle that contain big gut. And this is the signal for big gut. You can see there's a smaller uh, diameter of colloidal gold. So you are seeing this. So we rarely saw this kind of vesicles, the big glut 2 big gut. So just from these studies, we conclude that there are vesicles for the release of GABA and vesicles for the release of glutamine. So then uh, doing the quantification of this type of preparations, what we found is that within the total population of vesicles, 60% contain BGLUT2, about very close to 40% contain BGAD, and rarely contain BGLUT2 BGAD. So this is just based on purified vesicles. But then we did co-immunoprecipitation, and I just showing you here the example. We took, again, our preparation of vesicles, and then we um, immunoprecipitate the vesicles with an antibody against a big glut 2 here, and run the Western blood. And as expected, we're using an anti big glut 2 with the tech, the signal of big glut 2, but we did not find big at. And we know that there are vesicles because they have this, uh, because we detect synaptophysis. And we did the opposite in which we immunoprecipitate with BGAT. So from these uh, studies, uh, we conclude that the lateral havenula has separated subpopulations for the release of glutamine and separated vesicles for the release of GABA. So in summary, I showed you that half of the total population of axon terminals in the lateral havenula who express big glut 2 and BGAT show you that the dual big glut 2 BGAT axon terminals are from either VT8 or the EPN, and show you that these dual big glut 2 BGAT axon terminals co release glutamate and GABA from different pools of vesicles. Well, this, this is our conclusion. Uh, I then have time to show you that we have identified uh, the GABA-8 receptor and amper glutamate receptor in the postsynaptic aspect of this, um, the synapse established by this dual glutamate GABA releasing terminals. Uh, I also uh, I didn't have time to show you that we have found that these axon terminals, dual axon terminals, can target a single uh, dendrite in which they release uh, glutamate and GABA, but also some of these axon terminals target uh, distinct um, postsynaptic dendrites. So what I have tried to do today is to show you a journey from the discovery of these VTA glutamatergic neurons from the discovery of anticipated mechanisms of neurotransmission. Show you that the VTA glutamatergic neurons are capable to establish the more uh, familiar type of synapses in which uh, these glutamatergic neurons release glutamate on the GABA parvalbumin interneurons, show you that there are glutamatergic dopaminergic neurons in the VTA that uh, target the middle spiny neurons, and these neurons release uh, glutamate and dopamine from different 
pools of vesicles distributed in different micro domains in the same axon and show you that there the VTA also has glutamate GABA neurons that project to the lateral habenula. So that is regarding the distribution of the neurotransmission, but also uh, we found that the cellular composition in the VTA is, is uh, very uh, complex. We found that TH only neurons there have this homogeneous distribution, found uh, the, these glutamatergic neurons that they are infrequent in the very lateral part of the VTA and show you that there are glutamatergic dopaminergic neurons concentrated in the middle part of the VTA. Show you that there are uh, the, this, the popular GABA only neurons that are infrequent, but they are strategically distributed within the VTA. And show you that there are glutamic GABA neurons concentrated in the middle part of the VTA. So now we are trying to study these different populations of neurons uh, by using intersectional approaches. And I don't have time to go into these uh, studies, uh, but just to tell you that now uh, in the same slide of the VTA, we can identify the endogenous production of fluorescent proteins within the different types of neurons. And then this facilitate several things. One, the recording of these different types of neurons and also their manipulation and study their responses in behavior uh, by uh, expressing GCAM in, into these different types of neurons and then measure their activity in different uh, behavior tasks. And with that, I want to acknowledge several individuals, former students and current uh, postdoc, uh, sorry, current um, previous postdocs and current postdocs, as well as our collaborators. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing any 